It is Friday, February 19th, and markets are quiet, which beats hell out of panic. Uh, markets everywhere have quieted down all of a sudden. The biggest upset in January in public view were global stock markets, and different stories in different places, but stock markets got in trouble because of the perception that the global economy outside the U.S. is slowing down. The U.S. stock market went down with external stock markets, even though the U.S. economy is not going down, not yet. U.S. stock market corporate earnings, almost 50 percent, maybe a little more than 50 percent, still come from overseas. So if overseas economies are sagging and the dollar is rising in value, those earnings are worth less, which hurt our stock market. Uh, we don't. I, I, I think the stock market here is much more reflective of goings on than an agent of cause. If it really falls out of bed, then it's hurtful here, but the, the world is really trying to figure out what, what in the world is going on, and in the whole world, not just here. The more significant move that has taken place since the first of the year is the interest rate move. It, it takes something, it takes an earthquake to knock the yield on 10-year Treasury notes and mortgages down a full half percentage point in 30 days. And we sit now barely a quarter percent above an 80-year low. Mortgage rates at three and three quarters. We touched 3.5 three years ago, um, almost four years ago. And the I, I, that's the lowest, th these are the lowest interest rates since the first 30 year fixed rate loans were closed in 1934. Might we get down there? Yes, indeed we might. Uh, markets are, I, I, are unsettled also because the Fed is itself unsettled. Now, fortunately, everybody's paying attention to the election and a crazy bunch of candidates, which no matter what party you're in, you're a little uncertain. Uh, and this week, with the death of Antonin Scalia, Congress is going to be preoccupied with arguing about packing the Supreme Court. And fortunately, nobody's going to pay attention to the Fed. And in the copy accompanying this video, I, there's a rundown on the Fed and what's happening there. Uh, I think the world of Janet Yellen, I was pleased that she was nominated. She's a fine thinker and a tremendous skill, and so far it's not going well for her as a public leader and uh, a controller of what takes place inside the Fed, it's not going well. The, one of the Fed's most important jobs is to give us some coherent view of what's taking place outside uh, in the United States and outside. And I, nobody really predicts the future. That's not the important part. Their forecasting has been awful for, shoot, almost 10 years now. And the, well, what's coming out of the Fed is more an indication of disarray than an understanding of what's taking place. And it's just like parents and kids. Don't tell the kids you don't know what you're doing. It's upsetting to the kids if you tell them that you don't know what you're doing. They make up a story. Uh, get really vague. Uh, uh, go on vacation. Do something else. But um, I... I that's where we are. Uh, we've got another couple of weeks before we get big economic data for the month of February. So there'll be some thumb twiddling until that takes place. Uh, but we're also going to be watching markets. And overseas markets are a big deal. And the center of difficulty is China. And it's spreading outward from China. It may turn out to be Europe again at some moment or Japan at some moment, but China's the big deal. And the place is so opaque uh, its reporting is so phony that it's very hard for us to figure out what's going on there except in the allegory I used last week of gravitational waves. You can't see them, but they're there. Good weekend.